We are now talking to Kristen Hessler, Professor of Philosophy here at the University of Albany, our resident expert in team-based learning in large lecture classes. Can you talk to us a little bit about your motivation for using team-based learning? Yes. I'm about to start my fourth year here, and I've been teaching uh, Philosophy 114, Morals and Society, um, every semester since I've been here. And at least every other semester it's been in the LC Lecture Center. So I've had 138 um, students most of the times that I've taught this class. Especially when it's in the LC, I was finding it extremely difficult to manage the class. And I had um, dynamics like the following. <laughs> I would announce quizzes to like make them come, make it rational for them to come. Um, and they would come, it would work, and they would take the quiz and leave. So if I then said, okay, we're going to have pop quizzes at any time during the class, they'd come and sort of wait a while, see if there was one, and then take their chances and leave. For a lot of students, I think this is a general education class, so a lot of them are there to meet this general education humanities requirement. And I realize that for a lot of them, I mean, there's 138 coming through every semester, for a lot of them this may be their only philosophy class. I want it to be a positive experience. Um, and possibly to show them, you know, philosophy can be exciting, college can be exciting, learning can be exciting. More specifically, goals, you know, for within the class, I really wanted them to um, not just, you know, report back to me, this is what was said in the readings. And that was sort of what the most I could ask of them, I thought, given the way I had been teaching, the, the lecture course because it's very difficult to engage with 130 individuals. I was very frustrated not only that it wasn't successful at those modest goals, but that I thought that um, philosophy is an exciting discipline, it's an active discipline. Um, and it's something that I think students can really use. Teaching that class was becoming depressing to me. My one strategy, the only thing I could think of was just sort of um, literally dumbing it down. Um, and um, thinking remedial, and that was even more depressing. So, it was a, when I was kind of at that stage, I went to um, Larry Michelson's workshop that Itlow hosted when he visited campus. It got me thinking. The kinds of things he was talking about happening with TBL were the kinds of things that I thought would need to happen in my class. So I thought, well, yeah, maybe it would help. I asked a question of Larry Michelson because I came late to the workshop. And I forget what made me ask the question, but he said something that made me put up my hand and say something like, so it sounds like you're saying, are you implying that I lecture less and they learn more? Like something like that, <laughs> a skeptical question. And he actually was saying, you can get undergraduates to think in ways that you would expect graduate students to think. Or you can expect that kind of creativity and um, engagement. And that sounded like, oh, well, hey, <laughs> you know, there's that extra, you know, I'm hoping students can do something with this material, not just sort of absorb it. Um, and so th that my, that exchange with Michelson was sort of influential in my thinking. My hopes were that uh, incorporating TBL into the LC class would really provide a mechanism to engage um, 138 students at a time in introductory philosophy and um, really enable them to um, enjoy the class. And I was hoping that that might make me enjoy the class also. So that's what motivated me to, to look into it more.